Bonjour, hi, um, uh, it's Noemi Burles. I am uh, president of uh, the board of directors of ECED. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the um, uh, homeschooling regulations in Quebec. Um, first of all, I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of what ACAD does in Quebec. Uh, we are an association of over uh, six um, uh, of about 600 um, homeschooling families in Quebec. Uh, our association is 100% uh, run by uh, homeschooling families, so about 10% of our members are uh, volunteers at ACAD, um, and we work uh, solely on membership fees and on uh, donations. So um, if, uh, if you like the work that we do, please uh, um, look, look us up and uh, become a member or um, uh, donate, uh, and uh, it'll help support the work that we do. Um, ACAD has been involved in uh, the process uh, of uh, looking over this law for several years now. Uh, it started in 2015 when uh, the Quebec Ombudsman contacted ACAD to get more information about homeschooling in Quebec. And since then, we've been working in extensively with the minister, uh, meeting with MNAs, working with you and with our members to try to um, make um, people in uh, in uh, the, 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 the politicians uh, to, to help them understand the realities of homeschooling in Quebec and uh, um, you know the things that uh, they can actually do to help us out so um, uh, yeah I'm getting some unhappy faces and and laughs uh, you know we did our best and uh, three uh, years ago when we started this process um, I, I'm afraid to say that the ignorance was even bigger than it is today um, we have uh, now a law that is not ideal and the regulations are definitely not ideal uh, but the good news is that um, ACAD does not believe that you will have to change the way you homeschool your children. You don't have to change what you're doing in your kitchen. At, at, at the very least, for the vast majority of uh, our members, we do not feel that, that you will need to change what you do. It's just more paperwork and um, you know more reporting. But uh, even for the unschoolers out there, I, I'd like you to uh, um, not be too worried and uh, let's work together to uh, create a system that will uh, be open to the uh, variety of ways that we homeschool. Um, and I am personally confident that we can do that. So um, uh, let's not uh, lose all hope uh, and work together to create the system that we want. So I wanted to... Um, to start off with uh, a brief overview of uh, the law um, and then I'm going to go through the law regulation or actually I should say I'm going to go through the regulations. We have another um, Facebook Live that talks about the law, law and um, you should look at that if you want to hear about the law in general um, and it is on our YouTube channel and uh, I believe it will be on our website so um, you can look at that if you're interested in learning about the law. Today we'll be talking about the regulations. Um, and uh, I'll be answering as many questions as you have. I'm here until you get tired of hearing from me. So uh, I'll try to provide a summary at the beginning, and then if you want to hear more detail, you can continue listening, but you don't have to. Uh, you can. I'm hoping you'll get the vast majority of the information that you need in the first kind of 15 minutes. Um, uh, before I get into uh, the actual regulation, I do want to talk to you about um, things that you can do. Um, because uh, this isn't finished. Um, in uh, 2019, the government will be coming out with a guide which does not have force of law, but it will influence how um, uh, homeschooling reporting and supervising will happen in Quebec. So I I really appreciate if um, you know you can continue to help us and give us feedback so that we can create a guide that uh, is as simple as possible to follow that um, helps uh, parents across Quebec uh, do what they need to respect the law but not overwhelm them with paperwork. So that's kind of the, the goal that we have, and we're going to need your help uh, for that. Um, I've already talked about becoming members. It helps when you're a member because it makes us a bigger association. It helps us represent you, and you know it, we have more power when 
we meet with MNAs and we say that we re represent 600 or 700 families, then if we only have three families that are with, 300 families that are with us, um, you can give a donation. You can also um, provide feedback. So uh, we share all of the, uh, like any work that we do on the diets and things like that, we share with our members on our Facebook member page and through our newsletter. And uh, we've always worked as a, a group to create our documents. And so uh, the more families we have get actively uh, giving us feedback, the more chances that the guides and the things we'll suggest to the government will really respect what every family in Quebec wants. Um, we'll also be doing a lot of surveys this year. We want to keep track of what's happening with government and how they are implementing this. We want to know if there's any trouble spots. We want to know if there's any, um, you know, government workers that are particularly difficult. We don't want to have bad habits set in. So it's important that you tell us when things go well and when things don't go well so that we can, um, you know, be very responsive and we can encourage those who, who supervise well and who treat parents well to share best practices with uh, their colleagues and those that are more difficult to deal with well we're hoping to inform them and give them training and you know intervene if required to support uh, homeschooling uh, families and make sure that uh, anything that we don't like gets uh, nipped in the bud and and doesn't spread um, so uh, we will be um, sending surveys both to our members and to the community at large and in order to best represent you the more you answer our questions the better we are the more credible we are and the more better information we have so we can you know represent you properly um, when we meet with the government and uh, work on the guide and, and uh, other material um, so the government guide will be coming out in 2019. As I said, it will not have force of law, but uh, it will have a force of influence. Um, but we feel as an association that 2019 is too far. People need to know what they need to do this year. Um, and so we're going to work on a guide of suggestions. We can't tell you what to do, and we don't actually know the answers to a lot of, the, of these things. But uh, we, we'll be talking to many different people, and we're um, actually setting a meeting up with um, the other associations to try to figure out you know, what guidelines we can give to our members um, and, and to everyone um, that um, seems to suit all of the associations and all these uh, you know, support groups. Um, so we're going to try to compile a list of uh, suggested practices or examples. There won't be any guarantees because you know we don't know. We won't know until 2019 what the government is expecting. Um, but uh, at least we can try to set an example and um, and 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 set the ball rolling in in a direction that we like. So we figure if everybody um, follows a guide that is simple and clear and doesn't request more than what the law says then um, we're hoping that there won't be a scope creep and over the years the you know that the, the, the guide the government will come out will will you know be influenced by what we do this year um, and the government actually said that the guide would be influenced by what we do this year so it's important that we do things this year like what, what we want to have to do for the rest of the, of, uh, the years. So um, I wouldn't suggest to overkill anything this year. This year is the year to set expectations. Let's keep the bar low in terms of the amount of information we, we provide and the amount of detail we give about our private lives to the government. And let's make sure we stick to the minimum required to, by the law so that we train the, the people working uh, on our files to um, to not expect more than what's in the law. Um, uh, and I think that was something that didn't really work out with the school boards. And a lot of school boards were asking more than what was required by the law. And we can't let them do that again uh, with this new law. It's a chance to reset our relationships with uh, the uh, people supervising us. Um, and let's take advantage of that. So um, that uh, all that being said, but the other thing I'd like to say is um, we are um, working very hard at ACAD to start creating, not start actually, a, a build on our Anglophone services, um, our lawyers Anglophone. Uh, we have support, um, you know, people ready to answer phone calls in English. We have an English um, Facebook group. Um, we are translating or creating a new content in English. And we're, we're working really hard to do that as quickly as we can. Uh, so please bear with us as uh, we are working on these things. But but uh, also, if you're interested,
interested in being involved in starting to create uh, material in, in English, in uh, uh, making lists of resources, in uh, being a translator or uh, creating new content. Uh, we don't want um, a kid anglophone to be a Google Translate of a kid French. We want it to take on its own life and we want it to, to represent you, the anglophone community. You may have concerns that are different from what our francophone members um, are concerned about and, and we want to be fully there for you. But the association being what it is, run 100% by volunteers. If I don't, if we don't have anglophone volunteers, then we can't offer all of these anglophone services. So I'd like to thank um, Alana, uh, Gail, uh, Constantia, Sinead, and all of the other anglophone uh, uh, volunteers who are helping. Uh, but they they have work up to here. So if you have time and and you are interested in getting involved, that there's a lot of different roles, and we'll be happy to uh, talk and see what fits uh, with you and the time you're willing to spend on helping build a strong anglophone. Uh, legal uh, support association uh, for you all. Okay, so now I'm done with the preamble. Let's start with the actual um, uh, regulations. Um, this uh, was published uh, yesterday. Um, the regulations are going to be in in uh, in force on July 1st. So before July 1st, nothing changes. Um, you you follow the old law. Uh, Nikki, thank you for asking about volunteering. You can send an email to um, to uh, ACAD. Uh, you can send an email to administration at aked.qc.ca, uh, and uh, the email will be forwarded to me, and you and I can have a conversation about what you can do. So send an email or, or look at our contact page. You can call us. You can you can email us if you want to volunteer. The email will end up in my lap. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for thanking everyone who volunteers. All right, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus on the on the um, articles that have the most most meat. There's a lot of content here. Um, I'd like everybody to know that ICAD is uh, planning on doing a and uh, creating a guide, and we are uh, hoping to publish it July 16th. Um, and uh, it should be available on our website. We'll be posting it on all the Facebook groups um, and uh, and sending it on, in our newsletter to our members. Um, as I said, the guide will be suggestions. Um, so if if you're worried but you don't want to listen to this whole thing, just wait till July 16th. We'll give you the guide. You have nothing that you need to do before July 16th for next year. Um, so uh, the first things that happen in in the law this year uh, for, for next year's homeschooling is September 1st. Before that, you can go on vacation. You can not worry about it. And then, you know, in August, come back from vacation and look at the guide. And uh, we we promise to do, you know, we've seen the regulations. We know that we can do something that's simple. You're not going to be spending 20 hours. Well, unless you're, you're, you're super, <laughs> you know, you're super zealous. I don't want to make a promise, but you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take you that long to make uh, uh, the, the material that's required for, for September 1st and September 30th. Um, so um, have fun this summer and worry about this in August. We'll have a, a, a plan for you, uh, a guide uh, to, 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 you know, give you suggestions on how to go forward. All right, um, so for those who, who want to hear a bit more today, um, uh, I can't give you um, specific interpretations today because we haven't had a chance to talk to all of our lawyers um, and, you know, and discuss the best strategies. So I'm going to give you some rough information today, but what you really need to look at is the guide when it comes out in mid-July because that will be what we discussed uh, you know, and we'll have discussed with all your lawyers. It won't be... You know, there won't be any guarantees, but, you know, it, it'll be something that, that makes sense for Quebec and that is based on more than just my personal knowledge. All right, so let's start with the regulations. Um, Article 2 uh, says that on um, by July 1st of every year, but there's a clause later that says for this year, uh, that date is, is uh, pushed back. So this will be for every year except for this year. Uh, by July 1st, we need to send a notice uh, to the minister that we will be um, homeschooling our children. Um, there is The next deadline is September 30th. 
um, to hand in a, um, a learning project. Learning project is pretty much what we used to call a plan. Um, we'll discuss about the, the learning project in more detail shortly. Um, and then um, by uh, the third to the fifth month of uh, your homeschooling journey, you will have to provide uh, both a, um, a, a, a progress report on your child's progress and also, and I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure that I have the right terminology, um, also a status report on um, the uh, on how your 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 project is going. So it's the same piece of paper you would put. You know, my my project is going well. I'm doing the activities I said I would do, and then my kid is learning well, and he I see him progressing. That's I mean. Uh, a, a succinct version of, of what you would put in the report, but that's basically what you would put in that mid-year um, report. And then at the end of the year, uh, you would have to send in um, uh, uh, a, a, a final report that just talks about your child's progress. That report would be based on uh, on every, on what you saw through the year, but also on an evaluation that would have to be done. And um, there's five different ways you can get your child evaluated. Um, I'll talk about that in detail when we get to that section, but this is just a quick overview of what you need to do. And then the law uh, talks about uh, what happens is if your child has problems or uh, as well as uh, the services that the minister will provide and the school board will provide. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath on those things uh, for this year, so you'll have time over the next year to learn more about that. So that's just a, a quick overview, just giving you a sense of what uh, is uh, expected in general. So I'm going to go through the regulations now, article by article, um, and uh, you can ask me questions as we go along, and I'll try to answer them uh, as much as I can. If I don't answer your question right away, um, write it, you know, wait 10 minutes and then write it again, because sometimes I, it scrolls and I don't realize that there's questions uh, being asked because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and, and sometimes I don't see the questions that you ask. If uh, you uh, see this video after um, I have uh, spoken, feel free to uh, write uh, questions on our Anglophone Facebook group or on this video. I come back every once in a while and just answer any questions uh, later on. All right, so um, Article 2 of the regulation talks about the um, notice that you have to send to the minister and to the school board. Um, you uh, would need to send the uh, notice to, you, to your school board, um, and if you have um, a dispensation, uh, I forget what the word is in English, but if you're allowed to do um, uh, the, um, if you're allowed to go to an English school, then you'd have to send it to the French school and to the, the, the French school board on your territory and the English school board on your territory. That's what I understand from this, but we are checking with uh, the, uh, with our paralegals to see if there is any, any indication in there that we could go with another school board of our choice. Um, we're not sure about that, so so we're going to wait to get um, some some feedback on that, and we will um, explain it in the guide when it comes out. Um, so the notice is fairly simple. It you know you it's the kid's name, the address, the date of birth, the name of the parents, uh, the same information for uh, the contact information for the parents, um, and then uh, you'd have to say the date at which the child stopped attending um, an educational institution and uh, the your child's permanent quote code. Um, and uh, you'd have to say what, what your school board is. Uh, this is, uh, you know, from what I can see, the only thing you would have to do with your school board if um, you don't um, uh, if you don't require any services from the school board. So you no longer would need to deal with the school board at all except to send a letter or the, the uh, a notice saying that you are homeschooling and you're going to be dealing with the minister from now on. So you just need to let them know that that's happening. After that, um, you know, this year we're expecting many school boards to not know what the law is and that it's changed. We're going to write stuff in the guide that you can, you know, you can send to, to refer them to our website or uh, refer them to actual to the actual law so that they can, you know, we can educate them because we're not sure how much the minister is going to actually um, 
you know, train them on this new law. Um, we've got uh, questions from Sasha. You've asked if there's forms um, uh, in our guide and on our website. We plan on providing a couple of examples of, of forms um, and uh, you know examples of the different documents. Um, it, it, uh, again, uh, you know, nothing is obligatory, but we want to try to make sure that everybody understands that we should keep it simple, we should keep it short, we should av avoid schooly sounding language because we want a regular parent who doesn't have a bachelor's in education to be able to fill this stuff out without tearing their hair out. And frankly, I don't want to have to answer all the phone calls of people if we start having a standard that is you know, let's lose, use all this school jargon. Um, so let's keep it to, you know, very simple. So we're going to show you very simple examples, and we're going to urge everybody to follow these examples. Uh, and we're hoping that most of you will, so that we will train the the people um, supervising us to accept and and expect simple and you know and uh, short and uh, and and you know human language. Um, uh, I was asked, um, uh, I don't know who asked, but someone asked what happens if we're not Bill 101 ex exempt. The same thing happens, except that you just send the form to the French school board. You wouldn't send it to the English school board. And if you required any services, you would have to go to the French school board to get services. Uh, considering we don't get many services today, I, I mean, it's not a huge loss, but that was one of the interesting things with this uh, law and regulation is that we are expected to get services eventually. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how the French school boards deal with Anglophone parents um, who ask for services. Uh, and that will, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll track it and we'll try to inform you once we know. Uh, I have, uh, so Laurel asks, I have homeschooled only in English. Starting grade three this year, I've been told that I will have to switch to French as first language. And, um, as far as I can tell, uh, there is no requirement that you can that you teach in a certain language at home. Um, the law uh, and, and the regulation says you have to, you ha the child has to learn French, but it, nowhere does it say that all of the subjects have to be taught in French, and nowhere does it say that French has to be taught at a first, lang a first um, language level. Um, you know, again, uh, I, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I, you know, I am not allowed to talk about specific situations uh, as I'm not a lawyer, and this is based on my understanding of what I've heard. Um, you know, the minister say, but and we'll check with our um, we're, with our paralegals and with our lawyers. But and and we'll inform you in the guide. But nowhere has it ever been said, uh, and I would be extremely surprised um, that there's any implication in here that you would have to, um, you know, teach French more intensely. Um, you can't just live in Quebec and not expose your child to French at all. But there's a lot of ways that you a child can progress in French. And the 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 concept that we have throughout the law and throughout the regulations is your child has to progress. It's not even clear if the child is expected to progress in each discipline that is listed. There just has to be progress and we're going to try and we're going to see and talk to our paralegals and our lawyers, but we're going to try to push an interpretation that it's overall progress that we are care about and that there shouldn't be a big deal because the child is weaker in something versus something else. Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on. Um, uh, Nikki asked, can the document be in English if it's going to the French board? Um, I'd say try. <laughs> um, you know, nothing in the law says what the language of the document is, and um, the uh, the government is uh, supposed to provide services in English and in French in this province. Um, you know, sending a parent sending in a notice to a French school board is not it's not a service that the French school board is providing. Um, so the services, you know, the, the Bill 101 is based is on educational services re, re, um, given to the child. So I, you know, I, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I would say if for any of these things, if there's a, a clear, if there is not a clear indication that you are not allowed to do something, my my strategy, will, you know, that I would recommend, that I would suggest, and I I'd like people to try this, is test it, see. This is our first year. The government hasn't taken out a guide. The, the government, 
you know, it, it, it'd be a tough moral stand for the government to, to, to hit us all on the head for doing something that the regulations don't say we, we can't do. Um, you know, the worst that will happen is the government will, will specify in the guide that we can't do it anymore. But I, I, I would think that the government will just send you a letter if they're not happy with whatever you did. And, it, you know, if, if you get a letter, well, okay, great, you tried. Um, and, you know, just fix whatever and just send it back. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm personally not scared about getting a letter saying I did something wrong. Um, I'd much rather try stuff and see what we can get away with um, because it's in the best interest of our kids. Um, so, uh, it, so I would try the English, but if they don't accept uh, English for some reason, um, you know, it's it's basic information. So, you know, if they don't accept a, a English, we'll look at a kid. What we can do, you know, maybe we'll we'll create forms that are bilingual, so you can understand what the heck you're writing. Um, I don't see why uh, this should be a problem. Um, and and so um, the notice should be sent on or before July 1st of each year. That's if you already know you're homeschooling before July 1st. But if you make your decision to homeschool after July 1st, um, basically the, the regulations say that if the child stops attending um, an educational institution anytime during the school year, you need to send this notice within 10 days of that time, which means you can homeschool anytime. Um, you can start homeschooling anytime. Um, you know, we'll have to see if you start homeschooling one year and you decide to stop homeschooling, um, and then you, you know, you decide to start homeschooling again. Um, you know, if you do that every year, maybe someone will say something to you, I guess. But from what I understand here, there's nothing that stops you from deciding to homeschool at any time, and um, and uh, the government will just have to deal if we change our minds. Um, and okay, so and then the minister acknowledges receipt of the notice within in writing within 15 days. So you're supposed to get a, a notice once you've sent your notice that the minister has received it. Once you've sent this notice to the minister and to the school board, unless you want services from the school board, you should not have to talk to the school board ever again until the next year. Um, you also don't have to talk to them by phone, you don't have to go and meet them, you don't have to. You've sent the notice according to what it says in these regulations. That's all you need to do. So I tell you, you know, I, I wouldn't purposely, uh, you know, burn any bridges because you never, um, you never, uh, you never know. But um, you don't have to take any crap either if they try to intimidate you or call you. You can contact the kid, and if we need to, we will talk to the school boards and teach them about the law if uh, we see that there's systematic problems with certain school boards. Uh, Lisa says, is there a better board we should register with? Um, well, as I said, we'll need to check with uh, uh, the legal team to see um, if we are allowed to choose our school board. Um, it might be that you can only choose between the French and English school board on your territory. Uh, I'm going to wait to see what their interpretation on that is. Um, and so, uh, in general, I've heard that the Anglophone school boards are, uh, you know, are, are better at providing services. Uh, so if you have the choice, um, you might want to go to the Anglophone school boards. They're usually hungrier because, you know, people have the choice, and so they're 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 sometimes better at providing services. But I wouldn't say that that's true across the board. And I don't know each and every school board, English school board in, in Montreal, in, in sorry, in Quebec. So um, I I would say ask around, ask uh, ask your your uh, neighbor homeschoolers and see what school boards they're with and how it's going in terms of you know getting services, and then. And then you can make a choice like that. But again, I think you're going to have to try it. And nothing stops you from choosing. Well, as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be anything stopping you from choosing the French school board one year and the English school board another another year. And uh, I'm uh, so, and I suspect that there's funding that comes with that. So make them hungry. Um, if they want the, the money, then uh, that's it. Uh, what do we have access to once we register? Uh, when you register to the government, you are legal. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's services. I'll talk to you about the school board services uh, at the end. Um, but like I said, I personally, um, 
would uh, uh, tell you to, to, to be patient and not hold your breath. Uh, we've spoken to representatives of the school boards and um, they are, uh, they are panicked by this. Uh, they don't know if they'll be able to do all of this and the government is forcing them to do it. I mean, you can put pressure on them to do it. Um, and, you know, if you need services, there's nothing, you know, saying you, you can't put pressure on them. But uh, realistically, like I've, I've talked to human beings who, you know, school boards are not the most efficient and fastest institutions. Yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, libraries, school labs. Uh, I'm not sure about the activities, but I'll talk. I, I'll I'll talk to the, about the school boards uh, when we get further. Okay. So um, Article Four um, uh, talks about the students' learning projects. So we're gonna have to change our own vocabulary. We all say plans. Let's let's stick to learning projects so we don't confuse new people in three years. Um, so we have to send the government a learning project on September 30th or by September 30th of each year. By the way, um, we have a conference in Quebec, in Montreal, uh, September 22nd and 23rd this year. We are going to have bilingual speakers, or no, sorry, we're gonna have Anglophone speakers. We will have French conferences, but we also plan on having uh, several Anglophone uh, conferences as well. And um, we are gonna have workshops on how to make a plan. And you can just bring your ideas, or if you have no clue, just come to the conference you can uh, come to one of our workshops and um, when you leave the workshop our gate our aim is that you actually have your your learning projects written for your children when you leave the workshop so if that interests you uh, you can um, visit our um, our uh, our uh, conference uh, website at www congresaced.org um, if someone can put it in the comments somewhere that would be amazing um, all right, so Article 4, the Learning Project. This is an interesting article and it's an important article. Uh, the article says you have a choice. You can either um, apply the Quebec education program in its entirety um, and do the exams um, both for the school board and the minister's exams, or you can choose not to. And this is super important because this makes it very clear that we do not have to follow the program if we do not cho uh, choose to do so. And that is an important gain that we had in clarity compared to the old law. This will make it that, uh, you know, it'll be hard for a future government, unless they change the law, um, if, if for them to change the regulations to force us to follow the program in, in its entirety, because the regulations cannot, um, uh, the, the, the regulations, uh, I'm sorry, I was talking about the, the regulations say this, but the law also makes it clear that we don't have to follow the program. So all of this will make it a standard that and people shouldn't be expecting us to automatically follow the program. So, um, so that's important. So um, I uh, I suspect that there will be very few people who will choose the first option. And I would say even if you plan on following the whole program and doing the exams, um, if you want to, to have some liberty and some be able to change something or without whatever it is the requirements will be for option one, um, it, it's probably going to be easier to do even if you do want to follow the program in option two, but we'll, we need to understand a bit more what option one entails and the responsibilities of the parent, and that isn't clear for us. So um, if you choose to follow the program and you really want to follow that first option, then you'll have to contact um, your school board and the minister's office to understand what it is that you, you can and should do to be able to do that. Option two, um, it says uh, that um, you need to provide a varied and stimulating activities uh, that will uh, be conducive to the acquisition of a body of knowledge and skills. Okay, so basically it talks about a variety of activities and then it goes on to specify that you need to, it needs to include the learning of the French language. So nowhere does it say that it's French language at a, at a, uh, at a first language level. There's nothing in the regulations that say that. Um, so the French language, another language, so it can be 
English, but it could be Italian or you know whatever language that uh, that you know or are, cu are curious about. So you don't actually have to to teach English uh, according to these regulations. Um, and mathematics. Um, so those are the three that you don't have any choice about. And then it says as well as at least at least one subject belonging to each of the following areas of learning. So for each of the following items I'm going to say, you need to teach one subject or uh, one area of learning. Uh, so you've got the first one is mathematics, science, and technology. So my understanding is that since mathematics is already obligatory, I'm not sure you need to teach science and technology. Now, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Um, I, I think these are important skills to have. But in terms of reporting to the government, my understanding is that first category repeats the mathematics that was ob obligatory. So if so, if you decide that the body of knowledge that that um, that area of learning that you want to cover, uh, the subject you want to cover in that area of learning is mathematics, you should. I think you're you're okay for that thing. Um, then something in the arts. Um, uh, the uh, the third one is uh, in human development. And the fourth one is for children who are nine years old. Uh, um, they need to uh, learn social sciences as well. But that doesn't mean you need to cover everything in social sciences or arts or human development. It means you need to do something related to each of these subjects or these uh, areas of learning. So arts, um, and, and, and nowhere does it say that you have to use the definitions of the Quebec uh, education um, program. Um, I, we're going to check with our with uh, the legal team again on this, but um, you know I, our understanding is uh, you know science and technology is not just what is taught in science and technology at school. Um, you could do something that uh, you know is different. For example, you can teach science by cooking even though that isn't something that isn't regularly thought, taught in school. Um, you know, someone was talking about, like, if, if you're learning to become a magician, um, well, that might be considered arts. Um, you know, uh, music appreciation, if you go to concerts or if you, you know, go to the theater, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that, that might work. Um, so, again, we can't give you any guarantees. We don't know what will be accepted, but... Uh, we're encouraging people to try. Like, like I said, it might not be accepted, but we won't know until we test the boundaries. Um, you know, human development. Um, if you have conversations with your children about uh, any of the deep subjects in life, you know, if you're 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 doing anything that sounds like philosophy, if you're doing anything that um, you know talking about if you talk to your kids about drugs about sexuality if you're talk if you're doing gym or, or sorry if you're doing any kind of sports if your kid goes to play in the park it, though you know there's there's phys ed at school well going to the park would fit into human development um, in our guide we'll we'll give you more examples and on our website we'll give you even more examples and for members uh, in the um, member section we're hoping by the fall to have a lot more examples so that you can really find stuff that reflects you and how your family is but the goal and our goal with the guide and the explanations we're going to be giving you is that you don't have to change the way you teach your children you don't have to change the way you learn with your children the goal is just to figure out how to plug what you do in the in the spots that is are required by the law so that we can um, you know not have to worry about people interfering with the way we teach our children um, so uh, section 5 um, the parents must send to the minister a document describing this the students uh, learning project by September 30th of each year or if you're starting uh, homeschooling later, um, then it's within 30 days of the time that you take your child out of school. So, um, 
that's pretty self-explanatory. So you've got uh, at least 30 days, no matter when you decide to take your child out of school, you've got at least 30 days um, to uh, to write your education pro project. Again, we're going to try to keep that extremely simple. So 30 days should feel like tons of time for you. Um, the, the, the learning project has a whole slew of things that need to be included in it. Um, a kid will be providing examples and uh, uh, forms or tools that you can use to try to make this as simple as possible. So um, a description of the chosen educational approach. So uh, you don't have to actually name it. You can make a sentence or two. My understanding of that is because they've changed it since the last time, and it says a description. So you know, if if you do uh, math with workbooks, but then all these other things, you know, these other ways, and you could just describe in general, and they need to, they they should be able to accept that. Um, a, uh, the second item is a brief description of the activities chosen to support the learning of the French language, another language, and mathematics. I would stress the word brief, um, and uh, I would tell you that I don't think that you, uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll give more precise um, suggestions in our guide, but you don't have to put absolutely everything that you do. Uh, let's, let's not give more than what we have to. So um, you can pick a couple of activities for each of those items, and if we all do that, then the the unschooling family that doesn't spend um, tons of time doing stuff that is easy to describe uh, won't have to worry because they only have to find two or three things to stick for each of these categories. Um, the third item is other subjects that will be taught and a brief description of the activities chosen for that uh, purpose. Um, so uh, those would be, uh, you know, are you te are you going to be learning uh, music appreciation? Are you going to be learning uh, cooking for science? And are you going to be um, learning to um, improvise play in parks for human development? Um, so, you know, I would encourage people to pick stuff that your kids love to do and that you know that's going to happen anyways throughout the year find ways to to plug all that in those things and um and then you know and then you can worry about the stuff that you're not sure your kids are going to do on your own time that you don't have to worry about um you know i don't have to worry about my daughter wanting to go to the park so that's going to be her human development for the next 10 years um the other knowledge and skills to be acquired and a brief description of the activities chosen for that purpose um, so we're still trying to figure out how we can simplify other knowledge and skills. We're really trying to get to a, a, a point where people don't have to uh, divide what they do into, well, is this a knowledge or is this a subject and is this a skill or is this an area of learning? We're going we're gonna to try to do, um, uh, you know, to do something uh, that is going to be as simple as possible. We haven't figured out, uh, we're still working on that point um, uh, and we'll see we'll see what we can get away with as well uh, yeah Eva, Eva um, Singapore math level three if you're doing the workbooks I really don't see this being a problem at all um, uh, the edge so the fifth item is the educational resources that will be used um, it's good uh, they used to say in this phrase that they wanted to know the manuals and educational resources we were able to get the word manuals out so it it means that uh, manuals uh, workbooks are not specifically mentioned in this uh, in this section so it means you wouldn't necessarily have to put any um, or from what I understand uh, especially since they took the word manuals out um, so uh, that's uh, we're happy about that um, I, item number six an approximate plan of the time to be allocated to the learning activities Again, we're going to see um, how much we can stretch the envelope on that, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, the uh, legal team will tell us it's okay to suggest. Again, we can't promise anything, but we're going to try to suggest that we write, you know, for anybody who's not doing workbooks on a specific schedule, uh, that we write that we, you know, we do learning on and off for over 375 days. Um, roughly 16 hours a day um, or something like that uh, so we want we're gonna want to stay at a very high level uh, we want to stop avoiding uh, we want to try to avoid having parents 
try to guesstimate how much time they spent on um, things when it, it clearly is very difficult for homeschoolers to fill that line with any kind of meaning. Um, number seven, the names and contact information of every organization that will be contributing to the student's learning and in the description of the extent of the contribution. Um, so here uh, we're going to see again with the legal team, but the definition of, you know, what contributes to a student's learning is kind of in the eye of the beholder. So um, we're going to try to see uh, how we can get uh, to a point where we don't have to fill in the grocery store and the dipanar and the, you know, <laughs> the workshop we went to and, you know, I took a piano lesson and it, 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 like we do not want to have to send the um, telephone book to the government every year. So we're going to try to uh, create something or suggest something that, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, reasonable and that uh, in many cases, you know, it's okay if we skip some stuff in our plan and we do it anyways or in our, or in our learning project. Um, number eight uh, asks how the student's progress will be evaluated. Um, that is an item that um, we, uh, that is referred to later in the uh, learning project. We are going to uh, talk about it later, uh, but you have a choice of how your, your child uh, is going to be evaluated. And so you would have to communicate that here in the learning project. And then the last level of educational services received by the student from an educational institution. Um, they want to know what grade your kid was in when you took your child out of school. Um, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, I try. I try. <laughs> Um, so item six, oh, lucky us, the minister is to provide assistance to the parents if they were so required to develop the learning project. So uh, it's actually a good thing if, uh, if uh, a parent is having a lot of difficulties because they have a particular situation. Uh, of course, you can go to your associations for help, but, um, you know, I can see some maybe some special needs uh, children where a parent is... Uh, stressed about what to put because uh, it doesn't look very meaty if your child can't learn as fast as others, well then, you know, I would say dump it in the minister's lap. Then go and get their help writing what it is they need to hear useful for parents. Um, the, Eva, this is, um, uh, this law is a provincial law. Education is provincial in Quebec. So um, everything I'm saying here applies only for children being homeschooled in Quebec. But um, I, if you have a law, um, distance education thing happening with a province, with some uh, institution outside the province, you could you could put that organization, uh, oh, I understand your question. Yes, I think you would have to put the name of that organization and their contact information uh, if you're planning on the majority of your child's education being provided by an institution, even if it's outside of Quebec. Um, if starting from grade one, would you state no prior school? I, I, I guess unless you went to kindergarten, uh, I, would, I would think that that's what you would put. Um, yeah, it's the last grade. Uh, yeah, it's the last grade. <laughs> I forget what I said. Um, what if the last school was outside of Quebec? Oh, I get it. Oh, that's a really good question. It says from an educational institution. It doesn't say from Quebec. So, you know, stick it in and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I try something. I mean, they'll write it in the guide if you're not, you don't do the right thing. So do what you think for that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Helena, don't worry about it until the end of August. <laughs> yep, well, that, that was my goal. I'm really continuing this for those who are curious about all the details right this minute. But uh, I, I, I would say, like, leave and take the guide when we, when we publish it. And, and you know, uh, if I have to, I'll do, I'll do another Facebook Live when, when I publish the guide. Uh, but the, relax this summer. Don't worry about it. And we'll, we'll figure this all out together in August. Um, okay. Um, uh, Article 7. The minister examines the learning project submitted. The parents must send to the minister any information or document relevant to that examination. I think that is one where... Uh, You'll see, but I would 
maybe think that it, it wouldn't be a good idea to volunteer stuff unless it's asked for. But like for Eva, if you um, are sending your child to, a, uh, you know, doing a, a, an activity outside of uh, the of Quebec, uh, the minister might want to see uh, the um, course outline or, uh, you know, the course, the list of courses from the institution or I don't know, I'm like, I, I don't know for sure, but those were things are things that I would imagine um, might be uh, of interest to the minister. If you're saying that the majority of your child's education is going to be provided by another uh, institution, um, they may want to have some information about that institution. And uh, uh, yes, Marilyn, you're right. If everybody sends their info in, one of the things we want to do is we want to create databases of examples. Um, so if you want to share your examples, you can send those to uh, ACED and we will anonymize them. We'll take off the information about your child or any kind of specific identifying information, but then we can share with uh, our, our members. Uh, and if it's uh, particularly good, we'll put it on our, on our, um, our non-members page. Um, but, you know, let's not reinvent the wheel. If one of us does a plan that is universally good, then, hey, there's no plagiarism in, plagiarism in pr learning project creation. That's my motto. <laughs> um, and Jennifer, do evaluations apply to secondary level, or is my five-year-old subject to these evaluations at, at the end of each primary school year? Um, evaluations are every year, but I'll get to the evaluations later, uh, and I'll explain it to, to you. It's not necessarily a school board evaluation. You have, you have leeway in, in the evaluation, and it's not necessarily an exam. It can be, there's many different ways, and I am sure we can figure something out um, for, that will be palatable, palatable for every family. Um, considering we're constrained by the by by the by the law, and we can't just refuse. Um, uh, okay. Um, so, if the learning project does not comply with the applicable conditions and procedures, the minister has to tell families in writing and has to give the reasons. So, there's uh, you know there's no there should be much less of that uh, learning project bingo because if they have to write it down, uh, I've seen some families who who I really felt, um, you know, were, were being picked on more than others. Um, if we haven't documented the reasons why one family doesn't and one family does the same thing and it's, it's accepted, then we'll have a much stronger case, um, you know, to, to do something legal with that. So uh, we would encourage you to share your information with us and let us know when things are accepted so we can see what passed and things that aren't accepted so we can see if there's any trends or if there's anybody being anything um, that we need to be concerned about um, so we can either bring it to the table, bring it to the min to the consultation table that the minister has, bring it directly to the minister, or bring it to our lawyers. Um, all right, the minister's notice must contain recommendations appropriate to remedying the situation. Um, so there, the, there should be a lot less guesswork in adjusting things for um, the minister uh, on the pro learning project. So uh, go ahead and, um, you know, try stuff. And if it doesn't work, then they have to tell you what it is that you need to change. And I would say if they tell you what to change, do the minimum required to change that and see if it flies. And if we keep doing that, all of us, at some point we'll wear them out. <laughs> and they'll start accepting, you know, what we want to send them. Um, let's make it tough for them to ask us for changes. <laughs> let, let, let's make them say, oh, well, okay, fine, we'll just deal, it would take, take this first thing because it's just easier. Um, if the the minister tells you your there's a problem with your plan, he will uh, give you the reasons and he'll give you some uh, recommendations to remedy the situation. And then you'll have 30 days to change the plan. Um, we want to hear about ch changes that have been requested, um, and ACED is there to help its members. And to, uh, you know, if we are able to and we have the capacity, we'll try to help you, even if you aren't a member. Um, um, but, uh, uh, you know, if there's something simple to change, we can, we, we might be able to help you. Um, so, um, so we're there to, to support you. Let us know and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, article eight, 
the minister may, at the request of parents of handicapped students or students with social maladjustments or learning disabilities, excuse the students from part of the provisions of Section 4. So if you remember well, Section 4 was uh, the, diff the list of different subjects the child had to learn. Um, so if your child uh, has a handicap or um, social maladjustments, this is the first time I've he heard that term, <laughs> anyways, and then learning or learning disabilities, um, it doesn't say that you need proof. Um, so I don't know what the requirements will be there. Um, uh, so, so I would say, again, you might want to try if, even if you don't have a medical anything, if you feel that your child has these issues, um, you, and you feel that uh, you know it, 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 you need to concentrate on the basic subjects more than anything else. Um, I, I, you know, will 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 be clear in the guide. But my initial thoughts would be. You know, try yourself and see what you can do to, to do what's best for your child there. Um, the implementation of the learning project. Um, the parents must implement the student's learning project on or before September 30th of each year. Uh, or if the student stops attending in the middle of the year, within 30 days of that time. Now, some people, uh, I think September 30th works better than when it was September 1st, but some people might be on vacation until October. And um, uh, again, we'll give more precise information uh, when we talk about the guide, uh, when we're in the guide. But um, uh, I would say just make your vacation part of your learning you know, plan or project or uh, or say in your learning project that vacations are times where you're working on your human development or make it so the things that you do fit into the project plan. Don't change the things that you do because of the project, uh, the learning project. Uh, and that's the key. Just put the flexibility that you want in your plan so that if you're changing your pro your learning project, well, it was part of the learning project that I was going to change according to my child's interests, or I was going to change, you know, whether it worked or not, you know, based on whether it worked or not. Um, so that's it. Uh, so uh, Article 10, the parents may change, make any change to consider relevant to the learning project submitted. Um, that means you can change your learning project. Uh, they must inform the minister of any substantial change you make to the learning project within 15 days. I'm going to underline and highlight substantial change. So you can make any change that you want, um, but you only have to communicate the substantial changes. So again, we, uh, we're going to see what's in the guide, but my initial uh, recommendation would be put the flexibility in your project. So say that, you know, you are going to use workbooks, for example, uh, workbook blah, blah, blah. That way, you know, your project says that you're going to use the workbook. But if you change the workbook, it's okay because you only gave the workbook as an example. Um, same thing with, you know, I'm going to learn, my child will learn uh, mathematics by playing a variety of video games. Like, I wouldn't mention the video game. I'd just say video games are part of what we're doing. So if you change your, your games, you're not changing your project. Um, and, and so we're going to, we're going to provide more, um, more examples and uh, guidance in our guide, but that's that's the way you have to think about it. And make it so the paper works throughout the, throughout the year. Nikki asks, can we just send the same plan every year, but at, at first grade level, at second grade level? Um, I'm, I, I don't want to be specific today because uh, the lawyers haven't spoken, but my intent, uh, my answer to that would be, I don't see why you wouldn't send the same plan every year if you're continuing the same thing, but I am very uncomfortable with you saying at a first grade level or a second grade level. The, the regulation says you need to progress. It doesn't say you need to be at a level. So I would uh, encourage people not to use levels in their project plans because then what happens when your kid doesn't reach grade two level for whatever, whatever subject? Do you want to be it to be considered a problem? It's a problem if it was in your learning project and you didn't achieve it. If you don't put the level level in the learning project, then there's nothing to achieve. Um, I would tell you to um, instead of saying at the whatever level, I would say I would continue to build on the things that they did last year, and here's the plan. 
and, and then you don't even have to change your plan for grade one or grade two. You can just photocopy it every year because it says compared to the previous year. So anyways, um, it's more of my uh, fluid thinking here. <laughs> how can we how can we make this simple for you? Uh, Laurel, do we have to do school following the public school schedules? Can we choose to school four days a week? Um, I have told you that uh, you will not be, uh, our main goal is that you do not have to change what you want to do at home. There is nothing in these regulations that say how many hours, when, that, well, the only thing that it says when is it's from September to June, um, you, that, your plan is supposed to cover, but as I said, if your plan, if your your project, your learning project, learning project, learning project, I have to stop saying plan. But if you are thinking at home of taking vacation off for the last two months, you know, for May and June, well, just stick in your project that it's part of the learning experience, uh, and it's part of your project that you're going to study. What what is it? Geography. Geography would fit into uh, social studies. So there you go. Um, all right, uh, Article 11, the parents must prepare a written status report on the implementation of the learning project and send it to the minister at, at a time between the third and fifth month after beginning of the implementation of the learning project. So this is a fancy way of saying, what is it, the third month, if we start uh, September, October, November, so it would be December, uh, between December and in December and January, you would have to send in a um, learning project, uh, sorry, a uh, status report. But the third to fifth month is important only if you're starting a uh, homeschooling in the middle of the year. So it just pushes that back uh, whatever number of months. So in our guide, we'll tell you what to do if you're starting uh, homeschooling, you know, on if you're starting homeschooling on September 30th. But uh, the, the law is written like this, the, the regulation is written like this for people who are starting uh, midway through the year. The report must describe the learning activities completed by subject, the approximate time allocated to them, and if applicable, any change made to the learning project. So um, we're going to think about this clause a little bit more, uh, and uh, we'll have a suggestion in our guide. Uh, but uh, Needless to say, we're going to want to stay super high level about what the learning activities are that are completed so that this not does not take a bunch of time. Um, we're going to want to be minimalist, so no need to say five activities if one activity covers the requirement. Um, even if you do five activities, you don't need to write it up and you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to have to answer a ton of questions about each of these activities later on when you're reporting. So stick to the, as simple as possible. Um, and then the amount of time uh, approximately allo allocated to them, um, I, I'm hoping that we're going to try to put approximate time for all of the learning activities. Uh, Nikki, there's no proof required, um, but there is an evaluation. So uh, we'll talk about the evaluations later, but, um, you know, by default, it doesn't really say you have to prove it. I, I think there's different places in the regulations that says, um, you know, you must submit any documentation, you know, linked to this and that and the other. So they're opening the door to being able to ask you for that documentation. But I think as a default, um, I, I, I would be surprised that as a default, they expect you to send all the receipts and all this stuff. Like I would keep it, but uh, I, I, I don't see here the, the concept of having to prove anything other than uh, doing the evaluations. Um, and so there is a bunch of exceptions if you stop school uh, in the middle of the year or at the end of the year, um, then there's exceptions to the status reports and to uh, the different reporting. I'm not going to get into that uh, right now because I'm assuming most people are going to be who are listening to this or considering starting in September uh, next year. But in our guide, we will explain to you, uh, you know, what the deadlines are and what things you're exempted from if you choose to stop midway through the year, uh, schooling midway through the year. Um, 
Article 12, the parents are to attend a monitoring meeting while the student's learning project is being implemented. So considering that the way they seem to be thinking is that uh, implementation of the learning project is from September to June, my understanding, but again, check the guide, guide will be that at any time during that period, you can have a meeting uh, with the, um, the minister's uh, representative. Um, such a meeting may be held using any means of communication, allowing all participants to immediate, immediately communicate with the others. That opens the door to online, Skype, FaceTime, etc., or even phone uh, meetings. Uh, we suspect with the amount of work that they're going to have to do that uh, meetings um, will qu quickly become short. So if your family is convincing, you know, the first time you meet, I don't, I don't foresee um, the government uh, representatives wanting to spend two hours with you uh, every year. Uh, I mean, it might happen. Uh, I can't guarantee anything, but. Um, Government budgets being what they are, and human nature being what they are, if if you're not, it, it, you know, it, if they have no meet, reason to meet with you, uh, then then they're going to keep those forced meetings, you know, fairly short. I would I would hope. Um, the the minister must inform the parents in writing of the time and procedure of the meeting at least 15 days before it is to be held. So that means they can't force you to meet with them within 14 days. Um, I've talked informally with people from the minister's office. Um, so according to the people that I've spoken to, they've said that the the law, um, that kind of law is is found in a lot of, uh, that wording is found in a lot of different laws, and the way it's applied is uh, what a reasonable person would, would, would think. So if you're traveling for three months and you get an, a, a notice and you're somewhere where, you know, you're on an island somewhere and the, the connections are spotty or they would cost you $10,000 to, to call, uh, the, the, the minister's uh, uh, team told me no reasonable judge would, you know, get angry at you because you missed a meeting because you were out of the country. Um, that this and, and no, and if your child is sick for two weeks and you call when you get that, that notice and you say, look, I can't, you know, uh, I'll meet you in a month. Um, you know, can we figure something out together? Then again, if the person answering you for that um, doesn't isn't reasonable, uh, again the the minister's team kind of told me that there's no judge that would you know get angry at you because of a reasonable situation. So this these kinds of things are there for the parent that is not in good faith and systematically brushes off these requests. It's there so the minister can be tough with people who are unreasonable. Now, that's what I've heard, but you will have to see how we live it, and you'll have to let me know if there's things being requested that are unreasonable, and if things are being, and if people are being, if supervisors are being accommodating, we also want to know so that we can, you know, share this information more definitively with people and tell them, look, don't worry about it, or, or, or let us know if we need to worry about it. If there's a problem in implementing the students' learning projects, um, and with uh, throughout this whole uh, law, if there's a problem in most cases, uh, not in this regulation, and in in all of these cases, if there's a problem, what happens is there's, there's a meeting. So there there isn't this this uh, threat of youth pr protection services systematically, you know, being being mentioned throughout this like there isn't the government we that was a good thing that we got when we talked to the minister we he said he asked us if there's a problem what do you want us to do like how do we handle it and we say well if you think there's a problem with the family give them support to solve the problem don't you know don't sick youth protection services on them give them someone who'll tell them what they need to do to make it work um, so uh, in this case, it's the same thing. Uh, a meeting can be held electronically, or you know, any other means of communication, allowing the parents, the, the participants, to communicate with each other immediately. Um, and the minister must inform the parents in writing of the time and procedure of the meeting within 15 days uh, before it is held. Same thing as before. Um, Article 14, the ministers to provide assistance to the parents if a problem arises in implementing the learning project and submit recommendations to the parents that are conducive 
uh, to re remedying the situation. So not only is there supposed to, meet to be a meeting if there's a problem, but then the government is supposed to give recommendations. Um, if you don't follow the recommendations, there is nothing in this regulation that, that says what happens if you don't follow the regulations, uh, the, the recommendations. So if you don't agree with the recommendations that are being received, you might want to uh, test and see. Uh, I would, you know, I, I would, as a human being, I would personally say try to figure out a way to get a compromise or something. But uh, you know, and and you should talk to your association if a situation like that happens, you can handle it. But in general, I would say, you know, you uh, I, check your options before you run with the recommendations the government is giving you. Um, there may be other ways to solve the problem, and uh, you know, there's nothing. Here, it's a recommendation. It doesn't say you have to do it. So, uh, you know, I would suggest that you try to be cooperative where where you're okay with, with the, what is being suggested. But if there's something that goes against your values or that goes against what, you know, what you think is best for your children, then there's there seems to be room for uh, to do something different there. Um, uh, Article 15, now we're talking about the evaluation of the student's project progress. So Nikki um, uh, and Eva, I think you were asking questions about the evaluations or how to prove uh, uh, stuff. So this is where we would uh, look at that. Um, the parents must monitor the student's progress during the learning project using one or more evaluation methods chosen from among the following. So you must Choose one or several of the following five options to evaluate your child's progress within the period of the implementation project. So, you know, between September and June, you have to do a, a one of these things at least one time. That, that's the way I read it. Well, you'll get specifics in the guide. So you can have an evaluation by the school board that has jurisdiction. So this sounds like you can't go shopping for your school board, but you could go to your school board and ask to pass the exams. Um, the second option is an evaluation by a private educational institution. Um, so you can go get a, a private school to give you an evaluation. Um, in both of these cases, it says conducted according to the procedure it determines. So you can't go, it doesn't sound like you can go to the school board and say, I want the exam this date and like this, and you know, I don't want it to be too long or too short, or uh, the, the regulation kind of says it's, you know, their house, their rules. Um, so uh, I, I would encourage you to negotiate, but it seems to, to not give us a lot of leeway to um, request or, or demand things are there. The third option is uh, 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 is uh, maybe more uh, flexible for many families, uh, is uh, an evaluation by a holder of a teaching license. So a holder of a teaching license, in general, my understanding is um, uh, people who have a bachelor's degree uh, in Quebec uh, in education. So uh, someone who has a bachelor's degree in education in Quebec should normally have a teaching license. Uh, there are other um, people who have teaching license, including things like students who are learning. They have temporary licenses and, and uh, there's different categories of licenses that are not permanent. Um, which you can look up if it becomes a concern for you. But uh, someone who has a bachelor's degree in education, my understanding is normally they have a teaching license and that that teaching license is for life. So a retired teacher um, who has a bachelor's degree in education, I believe they should, they should still have their teaching license. Of course, you should talk with whoever it is that you uh, hire to do the evaluation asking, um, uh, if they have a teaching license uh, in Quebec. What about teachers in other provinces? I don't know. I don't think that they automatically have a teaching license in Quebec, uh, but that would be something that we'd have to check. Um, an examination. Okay, so the fourth option is an examination imposed by the minister under the first paragraph. Okay, so this is uh, ministry exams. Um, so that's the, that's the fourth option. Um, and the fifth option is a portfolio submitted to the minister. 
So you can do a portfolio the way you, you know, well, I won't say the way we used to because we're going to try to simplify the portfolios and really focus on what's required by the law and not do, you know, I, I've seen 200, 300 page portfolios. We're going to try to provide guidelines for a 10 page portfolio. Um, and so um, uh, we're going to, you can look at that in the guide. So I would, I would, um, I would really encourage people, uh, even if their portfolios are, you know, they have great, really long portfolios, keep that for your family, keep that for your friends, you know, do a slideshow and invite your family and, and you know, but the idea is not, this is not where you want to get your A in uh, government reporting, okay? It's okay if you're an average homeschooler, or it's, I should say, it's okay if you look like an average or so-so homeschooler. The government is looking for negligence. This is the minimum requirements to not be negligent. All you need to show is that you're not negligent. You don't need to show that you are the best homeschooling family. This is not the place to do it. Uh, do, let's do that amongst ourselves. We have conferences where we can share that information and be proud and pat each other on the back. But I, I'm really concerned about families that have six, seven, eight children. Uh, two or three of them have learning difficulties. Um, you know, there's some families where having to add a, a second page to this document is going to ruin their weekends. It's going to ruin their weeks. It's going to be stressful and create anxiety so if you only have one child and they like to do you know workbooks and they like to do you know everything under the sun good for you <laughs> you know come to our conferences and talk about your experiences and we'll be glad to hear it but you don't need to write all that down and give it all to the government okay you stick to what is required by law and we will all be much happier all right um, so what I really like in the regulations here, it says that the, the, the first to the third um, choices, so the evaluation by the school board, the evaluation by, by the private school, or, and the evaluation by a holder of a teaching license uh, may not be construed as restricting the methods of evaluation to those generally used in the school setting, such as somatic, somatic evaluations. That's a, a mouthful to say the evaluations don't have to be school tests. They don't have to look like what happens in schools. You can create a different evaluation method for the purposes of evaluating homeschooling, which means that if you're able to find an evaluate a, a holder of a teaching license that is willing to accept to evaluate your children according to whatever way you want your children to be evaluated, well then go for it and you know check whether you're working with a private school or with a holder of a teaching license or a school board or whoever it is that you're going to get you know ever whatever method that you want to use to to get an evaluation i would recommend talk to that person and agree on what the evaluation is going to look like and evaluation does not mean an exam um, and there are many teachers out there who believe that and who 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 understand that um, uh, you know, evaluation can be an observation. An evaluation can be, um, you know, maybe could it be a parent talking to a, 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 a teaching license um, holder discussing their observations? I don't know, but let's stretch the envelope and we're going to try um, to find um, some trusted uh, partners to work with um that we can recommend i'm not you know i can't make any promises but we're discussing and i can trying to see how can we how can we make the search for the evaluation method easier for parents as a whole we have a lot of different ideas um and uh, we will talk more about that at our conference in montreal um so um uh, we need to do a bunch of research um, Karin asks, uh, do these evaluations give credits at the secondary four and five level? That's the one million dollar question. Um, in the um, regulations, it says that the government, that the minister must tell us uh, about. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know what the reading, the meet, the wording is in English, but basically, uh, they need to tell us how we can get our um, our degree, how the kids can get their high school degree. Um, and uh, it's not specified in here, so it doesn't say that if we pass these or we do the exams if we get, but 
the government, the, the regulations say the government will need to tell us this. So we don't know today, but we are expected to to know that soon. Uh, do, is the government going to pay these evaluators? Uh, currently, we have no indication that the government will pay these evaluators. Um, well, the school board has to give free services, so uh, we would assume that um, evaluations by the school board would have to be free for us. Um, and the portfolio submitted to the minister, well, then the minister is the one paying his people. So, you know, we don't anticipate that there would be any fees related to the portfolio. But if you're hiring an eva a holder of a teaching license, I believe, you know, what I was told by some people when I asked the question was, well, it's up to you to choose the, the method that is free. If you're not happy with paying a teacher, then why don't you just send a portfolio to the minister? That was the answer that I got. Um, so uh, it depends on the evaluation method you choose. Article 16, the parents are, are to prepare two written reports on the student's progress and send them to the minister. Uh, there's a midterm report between the third and fifth month. Uh, that midterm report can be combined with the status report. So basically the goal will be let's, let's send one sheet of paper that says um, uh, I'm implementing the project and the kids doing the activities. And then a second paragraph, the kid's doing great and is progressing. Um, I've made it more succinct than what we should actually put, but I don't expect that we'll want to put a lot more than that. So it's one sheet of paper with two paragraphs or two sections to it that answers these two different reports that they asked for. Um, so that would answer the, the status report that we spoke about before and then and the midterm report progress report that is being spoken about here. Then there would be a, a, a second report that you would send, and this time it would be at the end uh, of the, the year. So it says a completion report not later than June 15th. Um, and the, so you would send that completion report with the portfolio, uh, or if you use another evaluation method. So if you use the portfolio as an evaluation method, you would send a portfolio with a sheet on top of it that says, you know, here's how my child progressed. And then if you're not sending the portfolio, then you would only send a sheet that says, here's my, how my child progressed because I got them evaluated this or that way. Um, both reports must show the student's learning progress and indicate the evaluations conducted to assess it. So it doesn't sound, it doesn't look like there is an evaluation per subject. It's a global evaluation, and I would stress that. So, um, so uh, you know, you can have one evaluation with one uh, holder of a teaching license um, and cover the progress, the global progress of the child, and uh, and and send kind of a an explanation of what you did and how that shows the progress, and that should be good. I, I'm 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 not. My English is not good right now. I'm not explaining things super clearly, but uh, when, when you'll see the guide, you'll have a better sense of everything I'm saying here. Um, and then uh, there's exceptions if uh, you're starting later in the year uh, on some of this reporting. Um, all right. And it specifies here that you can just send one document for the for the progress report and the status report. So that isn't, you know, fudging stuff. It's actually explicitly mentioned. Jennifer asks, where does it stand regarding a center like community? Can they send inspectors in? Um, uh, that uh, is in the law. It's not in the regulations. Uh, we don't have any more information. The regulations don't cover that. So I would encourage you, if you're curious about that, to look at the Facebook Live I did about the law. But a lot of that isn't clear. Um, and I, we're going to just have to test it and see what the government does. Um, some people uh, I've spoken to who are a little bit in the know said that the government was really more focused on um, institutions that position themselves at schools. So the government was really uh, would be really annoyed with groups that would say that they are a school but don't have a permit, whereas if it's a community center, the government might be less concerned about that. But I mean, this is not an official source. This is kind of back, you know, I talk to a lot of people and, and I'm hearing things, but I, I can't give you anything uh, specific. What if we are not finished early enough to complete a completion report by June 15th? 
Um, well, so I would say anything that you do before after June fifteenth, I would put it in the next year's reports. So um, again, you just have to show progress. So your definition of finish does not have to be the definition of finish you use for the government. You don't have to finish a book. You don't have to. You don't have to finish anything. You just have to show progress. So uh, you know. The, this is like the legal definition of finish, which uh, I know a ton of families that are going to continue doing whatever it is they do over the summer. Great. If you don't need to include the summer stuff to show your progress, then just don't. Um, otherwise, you can stick it in the next year's um, plans or uh, learning projects and, you know, cool. It's already done, I, I guess. Um, we, we'll, uh, w you know, We'll learn over time what we can do, but uh, that's what I would suggest we try. Um, all right. Uh, and then it says uh, that the taking of examinations and preparatory activities are free of charge. Now, that's what it says in the English version. In the French version, I seem to remember it was more specific about schools. Um, Oh, no, no, okay, so, uh, sorry, I skipped the paragraph, that's why. It says, the school board must also take the necessary measures to ensure that a student receiving homeschooling and who's eligible, eligible, eligible to sit for an examination uh, imposed by the minister, uh, you know, may be present at an examination sitting held in one of its rooms. So if the, if the school is already running, is already holding ministry exams, you are allowed to ask your child to be included in whatever room the kids are doing their exams and uh, that your child should be able to do exams along with the school kids um, for the ministry exams. And it specifies that that has to be free. So if you choose to send your child to school to, to, to do uh, a ministry exam, uh, the school can't charge you for that. Uh, <laughs> and you both, well, yes, I, 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 I'll get to that. Um, the uh, okay, so um, if the school board. Oh my goodness! I just skipped a whole section. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, we were back at the. I'm going back because I skipped a whole page. The minister, Article 17. The minister examines the reports on the students' learning progress, taking into account the students' ability and learning project. So your child's ability will be considered when the the minister examines the reports. If you have a child with uh, any kind of difficulties or challenges, um, you can mention that in your project, in your learning project, and the minister needs to take that into account. Um, the minister looks at progress related to the project that you submitted. If your project is accepted, then the minister can only, seems to be looking at progress based on the project that was accepted, which is, again, why I'm saying keep your projects, um, uh, you know, vague and keep them as simple. Um, that way, the minister, you know, if they, if they accepted the project, if it passes, then the uh, you know proving there was progress um, should be simple if if the material you sent was simple. If a report does not allow the student's progress to be adequately ass assessed, the minister must inform the parents in writing, giving the reasons. Um, they must provide recommendations again. And if 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 it gets to me too much trouble, um, you know, with the and and you're not able to satisfy the minister, well, you can ask the minister to evaluate the student's progress. Within 30 days after receiving such a notice, the parents must provide the minister with a new report on the student's progress or request the minister to evaluate the student's progress. Okay, Article 18, if the student's not making an adequate process, uh, progress, um, the parents and the student, this is the only time where a student being present is mentioned. So um, the parent and the student would meet with the government with the government representatives, um, and the meeting is to intend to more clearly identify the shortcomings and how to deal with them. Um, for all of the meetings, it says you can be accompanied by a person of your choice at the meeting, and this is something that we think is very important this first year, so that no parents get intimidated, so that we can we can support each other, um, so that we can make sure that we 
that that um, the uh, government worker doesn't try to pull you know pull a fast one on us. Um, we are uh, recommending that everybody bring a, a person with them. Every parent brings a person with them who's who who can be more objective and who can help mediate if there's an issue and you can be a witness if there's something that was said um you know uh, and just so that we're all stronger in this process um hopefully the people that will be affected to this work will be amazing people and supportive and then eventually we'll feel that maybe we don't need to have an extra person but until we know what we're getting into i would highly um suggest that you bring someone with you that is level-headed uh, that won't you know get upset very quickly and that can help you kind of remember what it is that was said and can help you um, uh, come up with with answers to questions and if you have no one to go with you um, you know we have ACAD volunteers across Quebec um, a kid needs to have experience with, uh, you know, understanding what happens in these meetings. I'm personally interested in, in attending some of these meetings with our members to, to see how it goes and be able to understand how the process goes better. So, um, you know, I can't promise we'll go with you, but uh, it can't hurt to ask. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, the minister has to inform us 15 days before it's held. Uh, the meetings can be by any uh, immediate communication. And so it, it's all of these clauses are the same. Uh, the minister uh, is to ensure that parents are informed of, of the standards and procedures for examinations, blah, 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 and for the certification of studies. So that means the minister must tell us how we can get a certification of studies so a you know either uh, uh, some kind of diploma or certificates out of uh, uh, out of uh, the uh, that education so that is very uh, good news the school board support okay i'm going to i'm going to go quickly over that because we don't know um, a lot of the other stuff we can kind of push, push the boundaries and see but school board support is going to be completely them you know, based on what the school boards actually do. Um, so, uh, and we'll have more information in the guide, but um, uh, like I said, I, I would be patient. I don't think that uh, September 30th, um, you know, there's going to be a ton of services out there. Um, so we'll have time to look at the school board support over the next couple of months, and, and you can learn more in depth about that. Um, so, uh, it, it does, you're supposed to work with a school board that has jurisdiction um, and, and all of these services are at the request of the parents so there's nothing that can be imposed on you the school board cannot force you to accept any services uh, according to what I, I, I read uh, again uh, I'm not a lawyer and we'll see it in the guide um, you will have more information there but uh, my understanding is that the school board can't can't require you to do any of these things the only time the school board has a say is if you ask them for services so um, if you request uh, if a parent requests it and if you follow the conditions that the school board uh, determines um, you can get school boards uh, you can get textbooks uh, the textbooks that are approved to be used in their schools. So you can't, you wouldn't be able to go to the school board and ask for, you know, Singapore math if they're not using it in their school. But if there's a school board being used in one of their schools, um, this this says that if you follow their conditions, um, they should be able to provide you that school board for your use for free. Uh, that textbook, sorry, for your use for free. You'd have to give it back at the end, but you, your your child could be able would be able to personally use that school book uh, that school book. You wouldn't have to like go to school to use it. Um, so, so okay. my husband he's taking care of our kids while uh, while I'm doing this. So uh, thank you for your patience. Oh hey sweetie, what's wrong? No, I don't want to go to McDonald's. Daddy, but he takes way too long. <laughs> okay, go, go talk to Daddy. And I have like a couple of hundred people watching me, so can I continue doing what I'm doing? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Enjoy McDonald's. Could you close the door, please? Okay. Thank you, sweetie. All right. Sorry about that. So, um, 
Uh, so the important thing here is under the conditions it determines, when I was talking to the school boards at the, uh, the um, consultation table, they, uh, they were very worried about parents' expectations. They do their orders April the year before the school, before school. So they said, you know, we might have to ask parents to tell us in April because we might not have enough school boards, uh, school uh, textbooks. So, um, so just keep in mind here that um, if you want services from the school board, um, the sooner you tell them, the more chances they'll be able to um, provide you know the service that you're requesting. Um, it doesn't mean they will be able to provide them, but for the textbooks, you know, they told us that they ordered them a year in advance, and it, it, so it, it may be a condition that they'll request you telling them a year in advance that you're going to need this school, this uh, textbook. Uh, so don't be surprised if that happens. Um, the school board must also, at the request of parents, provide the student uh, subject to availability and on the conditions it determines with access free of charge with the instructional material that is offered free of charge by the school. So if um, the school provides, um, I don't know, links to uh, software uh, and it provides it to its own students free of charge, then um, if it's available, they should provide you with those same online tools. Um, uh, I was told that they, there is a lot of license issues and a lot of uh, um, uh, labor uh, law issues, and so there's a they have tons of reasons why they can't do stuff. So again, that's why I'm saying don't hold your breath, but um, you can put pressure and you know um, uh, try to pressure them to move on those things faster. But I understand why I'm skeptical about having services anytime soon. Um, although I think the school books, the textbooks, I think is something that we could reasonably ask for fairly soon. It's some of the other services I, I'm, I'm skeptical about. Um, so uh, Article 21, the school board, uh, so subject to availability, so there's all these, you know, under their conditions, etc. I'm not going to say it every time because it's going to take forever, but there's a bunch of, of conditions. Um, can give you access to the documentary resources of the school library, so the school library, the academic career counseling and information, psychological services, psychoeducational services, special education services, remedial education services, and speech therapy. And the conditions there are uh, uh, talk. Um, those services are accessible subject to their availability and the needs of the student. So that's important because they are, they're going to have to compare the needs of our students with the needs of the students in the school and uh, find a way of prioritizing it. But, um, uh, but this basically says that they need to take us in their lists that we need, you know, but you have to remember that in school, some parents wait three years, so it might take a while. Um, the Article 22, the school board that has uh, uh, must provide the students with uh, access, uh, a free access to the library of at least one of its schools, the science laboratory of at least one of its schools, and the related material and equipment, the computer laboratory and the related material and equipment, the auditorium and art rooms of at least one of its schools, the sports and recreational facilities of at least one of its schools, and the related material and equipment used in the facilities. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay, if you want to take an exam, I spoke about that before. At a school, it has to be free, and they have to find a spot for them. Now, it says, if a parent makes a request for some of these services, and uh, it will specify in the guide, some of the services you don't have to give the pro learning project, but for some of the services, if you want it, the school wants to know what the context is. So if you're looking for um, um, psychoeducational services, well, they want to understand what it is you're trying to achieve with your child, what's your project, what are you trying to do, so that they can give services based on your plan, uh, on, on your learning project. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, although I know some families are very uncomfortable about providing their project, uh, their learning project to the school board, but understand that that's just in circumstances where you're looking for services, for certain services, where the school boards argue that they, it's important for them to understand what you're trying to do with your kids before they give you services. So, 
Uh, Lydia is asking if there's any risk to requesting any textbook from the school board of a specific grade, given we are trying not to identify with grade levels. Whoa, it, it, good question. I hadn't thought about that. I would say, uh, you know, uh, do what's good for your kid in the sense that, like, I wouldn't gratuitously put grade levels all over your plan and project, le um, a learning project. But if you want a school book for a specific grade, you're not going to stop yourself from writing what grade you want the school board to be in, uh, school book to be in. And I would argue that I could take a grade three school book and teach a grade one child or teach a grade six child, depending on what chapter is and what we did with it. So I don't feel like we need to have that equivalence between, um, you know, what materials we're asking and what grade we're teaching at home. Um, I, I, I would, uh, I, I, I would feel uncomfortable saying there's an automatic um, relationship between the, the two of that, of those. So. Um, uh, last section, uh, the regulations come into force on July 1st, except for the one about the date you have to give the notice. The one, the, the date you have to give the notice is pushed back ex exceptionally this year to September 1st. The other, um, every, so, so everything else is the dates that I spoke to you about, except for the date that you have to give the notice. Usually it would be July 1st, but this year uh, the notice has to be given by September 1st. So we'll provide information on our website about giving a notice um, in, in mid-July with the guide. We're going to include um, uh, suggested uh, documents that you can send for your notice, and we'll have some in English and in French. Um, but for the rest, uh, for all of the rest, I, I recommend you come to our conference. Uh, we're going to have... Um, uh, we're going to have workshops on how to do a learning project if you're using workbooks for the basic subjects. If you're not using workbooks, if you're an unschooler, we're going to have specific uh, uh, workshops on how to do that. Um, we're going to have workshops on how to do a, a report, a status report, a progress report, how to, how to choose your evaluation and how to choose who to evaluate yourself yourself if you're using workbooks if you're if you're an unschooler we're going to have specific conferences uh, workshops for each of these different kind of situations so that you can find the so that when you leave the conference you will have the tools that you need to not change the way you homeschool or unschool or different school or world school or whatever um, but you can report what you're doing and, you know, comply with the law and not have sleepless nights. So are there, um, are there any questions? <laughs> Trisha says, I'm not holding my breath. We special services. When we moved in December, we were told our hands are tied. Our resources are already allocated. When we asked about speech services and psych services to help my seven-year-old and second grader. Uh, okay, I lost it, but yeah, okay. Are babes in arms welcome? If you want it to happen, do it this year. I would say bring your whole menagerie. And if you don't get a babysitter for your dog, well, uh, okay, maybe not the dog, but uh, you know what? If they're not happy, they can pay for the babysitter. That's that's my thought. Again, we'll wait for the lawyers and the guide, but I would encourage you to um, do what it is you want to be accepted over time the government's guide is going to be based on what happens this year. If we get the people who are working with us from the government to accept something this year, it's more likely that it will be said that it is acceptable in the guide. This is the year to test stuff. If they don't like it, they can't yell at us. Or, I mean, they could, but, you know, it's like they don't tell us what they want. And then if we don't do what they want, it it would be hard for them to blame us. So, you know, we'll get sternly worded letters and then we'll just do whatever we need to fix it. So try it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so sorry, Nikki. <laughs> you were asking about at the conference. Yes. Um, children uh, zero to three years old are accepted at the conference uh, and uh at any age, if you're breastfeeding, you can bring your kids to the conference, but whether they're breastfed or not, from zero to three, you can bring them into the conference rooms. Uh, we'd like you to be respectful of others if your child is uh, is uh, very upset about being there, but uh, we trust parents to manage that properly. We'll also have a program for uh, children um, from four to 11 years old. We're gonna have activities planned for them, and uh, we're gonna have a, um, 
uh, teen activities. And so we're, we're planning a, a really neat program for teens. Uh, we want teens to stay in touch afterwards. So we're going to try to find ways for them to find friends and, and, and get to know other teenagers in Quebec who homeschool. And we're going to try to see if there's ways we can, you know, keep, keep in touch after the conference um, so that we can learn about different places in Quebec and different people in Quebec uh, who homeschool. Kate, the guide will be available on July 16th. That's the goal. Um, the more people we have to help, the more likely it'll happen. Uh, Debbie, can we get our kids eligibility certificates through the minister or do we still have to go through the school board? Very good question. Um, I would tell you try. Uh, it, it doesn't say anything about that in the regulations. So, um, you know what? Ask the minister and um, we'll see what they say. Any other questions? <coughs> Sorry. We're uh, <coughs> an hour and 45 minutes in. The longest Facebook Live I've ever done. All right. Well, that's it. Um, wait for the guide. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Send us your material as you make it. I will be happy to look at it and tell you what we think. Um, we can't give you any guarantees, but we can give you our opinion on stuff. If you have um, any issues over the next year, um, any concerns, let us know because we want to make sure this works for everybody. We want to make sure if there's any issues, we knit them in the bud. Uh, we want to be more organized than the minister so that they learn from us and not the other way around. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, oh, sending notes. Oh, there's no news about the, um, the health card um, matching. I, we don't know what's happening with that. We suspect it'll take a while, but we don't know. <coughs> I don't know when the government will tell us about diplomas. Sorry. Uh, as soon as I have information, I'll let you know about that. But we don't. We don't know. Um, become a member of a kid. It helps us. It makes. It brings my morale up. Uh, we are all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. I don't want to pay for my gas. I don't want to pay for my game cartridges and my long distances and um, when I go see the minister, my gas. Um, so it, your your memberships uh, pay for those things. Your membership pays for our website server um, and for you know printing documentation, and it pays for our lawyers so that our lawyer can advise us. Um, so uh, you know, e even if you don't feel worried about uh, the the new law and what's happening, if you like these information sessions, if you like what you do, what we do, please become a member or at least donate. Um, and if you have any any wish to share, uh, you know, what you do, what you know, your skills with the rest of the community, contact us. We need Anglophones to help us be able to really serve you well. So I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome, Erin. Uh, Annie, uh, thank you. Um, oh, yes, last question. Um, someone asked me uh, if if the school board has not yet evaluated your child for this year and the July 1st passes, um, do you still have to do the evaluations? The answer is, uh, I, I talked to, to some people, and the answer is, try your luck. Uh, depending on how well you are comfortable with taking a risk. Um, the law on July 1st changes. The old law that said that you had to be followed by the, the school board is no longer going to be there. So if the Youth Protection Services come and says, uh, you know, get called by the school board and says th these children didn't get evaluated last year, well, Youth Protection Services looks at the law as it is today. And Youth Protection, if you send your notice to the minister saying that you're, you're, you know, you're registering for next year, then there is a chance that the youth protection services isn't gonna isn't going to force you to do the the uh, school board evaluations because there's nothing in the law that is going to be current July first that says that you have to be evaluated by your school board. So um, so you can try your luck and let us know if it ha if it works, <laughs> uh, but we can't give any guarantees. 
if you want to volunteer, I'm sorry I didn't see what it said, but uh, you can write to me via F Facebook Messenger, send an email, just you know, raise your hand somehow, uh, make sure I, I see that you've you've uh, asked, and we'll we'll get you connected. Oh yeah, Beatrice, thank you. Do we need to show proof of English eligibility? Um, if you want your services from the Anglophone School Board, you would have to be eligible, and I'm assuming the Anglophone School Board would ask you for the proof of English eligibility. However, if uh, you're working with the minister, um, uh, for everybody, including French first language, whoever, uh, all it says is you have to progress in French. So, you know, if a, if a French kid isn't super fast or you have an Anglophone kid who isn't super fast and progressing in French, it, the eligibility, sh it, I don't think it should matter uh, here because, uh, uh, because you're not receiving any educational services here. It's you teaching at home. The eligibility is on government subsidies of uh, education services. When you are doing stuff at home and progressing in French with your child, the government isn't paying a cent. Then you don't have to you don't have to worry about eligibility, as far as I can tell. Okay. Any uh, last questions? Um, you can add some more on the on this uh, video, and like I said, I'll come back once in a while and see if there's any new questions, um, or you can uh, talk to us on our Facebook uh, Anglophone group. We have uh, uh, Quebec uh, Home Learners. Beatrice, could you put the link? I don't remember the name of the group in, in detail, uh, please. So um, I, I usually go there once in a while and, and answer any questions that are there. So you can ask those or you can you can um, uh, send a message to uh, ACED support if you have specific questions for support for this year. Otherwise, please hold off until July 16th um, when we have the guide and then our support staff will be able to help you with specific questions at that point. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope to see you at the conference, um, and uh, good luck this year. Um, you know, let's let's make the system that we want. Let's let's do this. It might be a little bit more work this year trying to do something and then having to redo it because it wasn't what the minister wanted or whatever. But it's worth the, it's worth the chance because if what we do this year passes, then that that is you know, there's a good chance it'll be accepted year, all the future years. So the work that we do this year will make a difference for the next 50 years of homeschooling in Quebec. Um, it's worth, uh, it's worth doing that. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, and good night.